Hello, good day and welcome back. So we're going to continue doing, playing with channels and we're going to have a little bit more fun. Uh, we're not quite out of channels yet. And so today we're going to look at sending a string. So far we've been sending integers on our channel. And um, yesterday we looked at a channel returning a channel. Um, but we didn't really get to play much with it. I mean, we did a little bit where we had a function that returns a, um, a channel and then, you know, consume it. So we did a little bit with it. But so far, it's channel returning a channel or, you know, channel of int. But we're going to continue to play a channel. And then we can get to touch on the time package. Um, we're not going to do everything in the time package, but we're going to get to play with it a little bit. So let's jump into it and see what we're going to get to do today. So I'm going to start off here by doing a copy minus R just as I do usually. Um, so I'm going to section 5. We're going to our section 5 directory here and start off my code editor. And then I'm going to pretty much start off with a code we add. So what are we doing? So more fun with channels. So uh, more channel stuff. All right. And so what do we want to do? Well, we said that all, um, so far we're going to play with channels that return, um, you know, pretty much int or another channel with int, but still wrong this idea of channels and int, right? So let's do this. Why don't we have something that sends us a message, right? Maybe it, it acts like a notification where we have this channel and it sends us a string after a while. So we can, we, we call this function and, um, it sends us a message. Maybe it's a timeout or something. So after some period of time, it would say, let's say after 100 seconds, uh, two seconds, for example, it would, you know, after. And after two seconds, so we have some time, some delay that it's going to use, int. And basically, we're going to make a channel of string. And we really only want to send one message, okay? So um, we can take out all these guys here. And we're going to say time out, okay? Um, something nicer. Your time is up, okay? And so basically, we don't have to worry. We're closing the channel. It's just one message we're going to send. And since we're not really going to loop over it because we don't have multiple values, so we don't really need to use range. And so um, it's going to look something like this, right? We, we don't need to loop. And so we're going to just say get the value off of that channel, okay? Clear? Pretty simple, right? So after some time, uh, we want after two seconds to um, print to get a value from our channel, which is your time is up. Now, if you run this right now, go run, um, you're going to see it says, right, it doesn't wait two seconds. It just says your time is up right immediately, right? Because we don't have anything to help us to delay. So one way we can do that is we can busy wait here, right? So we could do something like for... I get zero, you know, I less than, you know, 10 million or whatever, I plus plus, and we just sit there and do nothing, right? So that's one way in which you might imagine that how you can delay, but then you'd have to calculate and make sure as how doing a million or whatever number you put here delays whatever time that you want, right? And of course, somehow you're gonna use that time that's passed in, and you're gonna say, okay, maybe on this computer, Looping for a million time takes one second. So if I want two seconds, well, just whatever, right? But that wouldn't work for everybody because you're going to give this program to your friend or something, somebody, colleague, and their computer speed is different. And so it will take a different time to calculate a million. And plus, the disadvantage, not only that oh, this is not going to work on our computers, but just busy waiting here, you're not doing any work, right? But still, you have the computer sitting around here, busy waiting, they call it, and not doing anything. So we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to use the time package, right? And we're going to say time. But before we do that, let's just do it out here. Let's do this. Let's do um, start at the beginning, right? It's time that now. And there's a function called time that now. So there's a time package and there's a function called now being exposed, right? That's why you got a capital M there. And now we're going to call it after or later, all right? Or start, start and end, all right? And so what we can do is we can print out these two times, okay? So we can print out these two times. We can say, um, well, that's the message there, but just to check and see how long we waited, we could say fmt that print uh, f, and we can say start time 
was percent V backslash N, let's say, um, and then N times percent V, and then new line, okay? And so we get start, or we have end. Okay, so this is how easy it is to get the time from the operating system, and so it should be fine. And now we should run our program, and we're gonna see that our time is up. And our remember, we call our after time in between of start and now, right? Start and end. So if we look at the two times, um, they're pretty close, right? So we didn't wait the two seconds, of course. You know, these are like the nanoseconds there, so we, we're not gonna worry about that. Um, and so, of course, that's because I'm not doing any sort of delay or anything. So here, there's something called time that sleep. So we can say, I want you to sleep for, and now it takes a duration, right? Sleep pauses the current go routine for at least duration. A negative or zero duration causes sleep to return, causes sleep to return immediately. So um, we want it to sleep D, which is our required time, times whatever, time that seconds, right? Because uh, we don't know if it's nanoseconds, milliseconds, or whatever. So we have to sleep. In this case of go length, you can say seconds or milliseconds or whatever. Um, sleep function in like Java um, might do like milliseconds. Sleep function on a Unix shell by default is seconds. So um, every operating system on language, every language exposes the sleep function uh, a different way, right? So documentation. So in Go, you can say sleep and pass it a duration. And a duration is something that they've defined and they have seconds, milliseconds, and so on. And so if you look at this, it says invalid operation D times second mismatch type int and time duration. So D is an int times time that second, which is a duration, doesn't give you a duration, it's expected duration. So we have to cast this to a duration. So we're gonna say time that time that duration and cast our int value to it. So when we pass int into duration, we can get back a duration and then we time duration times time that second. Just know that how, that's how it is. Um, when we start talking about types um, and define your own type, if I put an actual integer here, it'll work and we're gonna get into explaining why that is, but it, it works now, okay? So even though you've seen an error message here, that's because my um, code is not being updated properly. The um, whatever, lint checker is just slow or weird. So now we can see that oh, it's sleeping two seconds, right? You can see that here. So two seconds, just as we requested, right? And um, let's run it again. And you're gonna see it's waiting two seconds and then bam, spits out my message, okay? Now, if we wanna see this sort of differently, I can do it this way. I can say, um, let's do this, separate this. I'm gonna take out end from here. I'm gonna take out start from here. Take out start. I'm gonna take out end, like I said. And I'm gonna put them different places. So I could put start after there. Then I call my function. Then after I, um, I return from that function, I call um, end. Of course, that have to go before there. And then eventually I could print out the value that I got. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. And so, no, and it doesn't really matter. I don't have to print out. Um, once I get the end value after I call end here, after the function return, I can print it out at any point, okay? And so I do that and I run it. I know you can see it says start, then I get my value and then print out um, and, and you can see again, it's two seconds delay, right? So that's one way in which my, I've changed my um, function now to return a string and it returns time. Well, um, and notice this function again is from sleep. Well, um, this sleep function is from the time package. Well, the time package allow you to essentially do something like this, which is after a certain time, you could tell it how long to wait, uh, it could send you a message. So instead of us calling uh, my after, we can call time, time that after, and we can tell it that we want to wait, you know, two seconds, right? And so we don't need 
my time function anymore. And now, let's see time. There we go. So let's see. I'm going to call now, get the start time, print it out. Then I'm going to call time that after, tell it, hey, after two seconds, I want you to um, sing. And you're going to see something very interesting here. So I notice how I call no here. All right. So I run it. And look at this. So start and bam. And so, but then look at this. There's something weird here. My start time and my end time are the same. But my value for V, there is where I, I see that oh, it waited two seconds. Okay, so what that tells you is that my time that after return a channel, you see if I put this here, you see time that after actually returns a channel on which you can read time value, right? So after waits for the duration of elapse and then sends the current time on the return channel. This is equivalent to, you know, to time that new, that whatever, whatever. The important thing to realize here is that when you call time that after, it returns immediately. And the value it returns is not, is a channel on which you can read time. And so that's why when I call here start, I get the current time. I call after, it returns immediately with a channel on which I can read the time. It's going to send me the time later. Then when I call time that now and say that's my end time, well, of course, between now, start and end, there was, there was very little time that elapsed. The, the, hence why the boat was 8.51.05, 8.51.05, and then just some nanoseconds different, because this Im returned immediately. Now, the reason why you saw a pause is because when it got here, it tried to read a value off of that channel C, but remember, it, the description for this says it would wait, it would delay and send you a, the time later on the channel. So it was waiting here for that two seconds to elapse. So here is where it was waiting for that two seconds to elapse. So if I want to reflect what's really happening, I have to put my end, get the time at the end after this point, right? And then now when I run this, you'll see that start, end, and then notice the value I get here is this is 11 seconds, which is two seconds after the start. I need to notice that now. Now is going to be a little bit later than my um, the time I get on the channel. That's because I'm calling end after. But since we're, um, when I call time that after, I'm getting uh, a channel where, which I'm getting time from. I don't really need to get end because that's given to me in this channel. So. I really don't need this, right? So um, I can say this is my end time, right? I read it off of the channel. And so run that, start, end. There we go. And you see 56, 58. So um, this is an example. So what is the purpose of this? Not to, just to introduce you to time that sleep and time that after, allow you to do delays. But to also show you another example of just as we were working on functions that returns channel, the library, Go language libraries and standard packages also uses those same concept. And so this is a function that returns a channel and a channel that you can specifically only read time from, as you can see from the return value up there, is saying that, oh, you can only read from this channel and the values you're going to be reading off is time values. And that's what we read off, right? And uh, we were able to print it out. So I don't want this to go on much longer. Uh, I think there's a nice simple example. In um, the next video, uh, we're going to look at select um, statement. Um, so until then, see you in the next video. If you have questions, please post them. Um, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for taking your time to come back and check out the videos. And see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.